Before we jump into the show, I want to let you know that Podcast Branding Academy is now open. This is my online school for podcasters. That's right. For any podcasters, new or old, looking to learn the latest approaches to branding, marketing, and audience growth, we offer group coaching through an easy monthly membership. Don't have a podcast yet? We've got you covered too. Grab our free podcasting 101 starter kit. Go to podcastbrandingacademy.com. Before July 1st, for our founding members discount, you'll also get live trainings, video tutorials, workbooks, one-on-one coaching, and more. You don't want to miss this. Head to podcastbrandingacademy.com. Brands on Brands. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Dave here. And today you're going to learn about how you can make residual income off of credit cards with our company, Residual Payments. On today's episode on Brands on Brands with my good friend, Brandon Berkmeyer. In a world where content is king and your reputation is your brand, how do you build a brand that matters? Welcome to Brands on Brands, a home for those that think different and push their boundaries. This is where branding that matters lives. Now, here is your host, Brandon Berkmeyer. Hey, 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 what's up? Welcome to Brands on Brands. I'm Brandon Berkmeyer, your personal branding coach. And today is another interview with a guru, with an expert, with one of the people out there making it happen in the payments processing space, in the residual income space, in the passive income space. And we're going to talk about it. But first, if you're new to the show, make sure you go to brandsonbrands.com and check out all of our free resources there, especially if you're looking to build your personal brand. Grab our starter kit for your free podcast at brandsonbrands.com forward slash starter kit. Now let's get into the interview here. Who we're talking to is David Carlin, David Carlin from residualpayments.com. If you have been part of the digital payment industry, you've heard of them. If not, you should know him and his wife, Patricia. They've processed billions of dollars in payments, worked with every major brand in the e-commerce industry, and have made tens of millions in commissions. After thousands of requests, they finally made a decision to pull back the curtain and teach everyone else out here exactly what it takes to become a million dollar payments agent. They have a great course that gets people into the business of becoming a payment processor at residualpayments.com. You can catch them on Instagram at Meet the Carlins if you want to get to know them more personally. But what I'll tell you you're going to hear in this show is you're going to hear a little bit about how to think about if you're building your own business, especially a business that's built on your personal brand, how do you think about bringing multiple streams of income into your world? right? Is it coaching? Is it speaking? Is it courses? Or is it bringing in something like residual payments, something where you are getting a percentage of every purchase that comes into your client's business and you're saving them money while you're doing it. You're saving them the high credit card fees that they're going to be paying with Stripe and PayPal simply by being the middleman instead of these corporate companies, right? All of that and more we talk about also, just what it takes to be an entrepreneur that gets ahead in this world, all on today's show. I hope you guys are excited as I am. And uh, without further ado, let's get into the show. Brands on Brands. All right, let's get going. I'm so excited to welcome our guest, David Carlin, to the show. First off, David, thank you for being here. Thank you for showing up today. I'm happy to be on. The reason I'm excited is that we get to talk about Kind of, I think we're going to get a lot of topics in today, but some of the areas we'll focus on have to do with like money, like the way you make money in business, specifically recurring income or residual income, monetizing your business, your personal brand. We're going to dive into all of that and probably some other things too. Uh, before we dive into that, what I really liked, I did the research on you and, and your business, and I think you take your lifestyle very seriously. In other words, you have figured out like how to take financial freedom and connect that to your life, to live happy, to find balance, whatever that is to you. So I'm kind of curious, let's talk about like, what does financial freedom, what is it and what does it mean to you specifically when I say those words? You know, I did a video recently online and what I told everybody is my dad always taught me, if you can't pay cash for something, you can't afford it. And I don't mean paying cash for everything, right? Because I also think it's stupid to pay cash for anything if you don't have to, because 
you could, I'd rather have my money in the bank or in other different businesses. But what I mean is, you know, I struggled with it for a long time. And I finally, finally grew up one day where, you know, when I was younger owning, cause I've owned companies my whole entire life. When I was younger, man, I spent, I didn't spend every dollar I made. I spent every dollar before it was made. You know what I mean? Like, like there was way, um, I constantly wanted to prove myself to other people. I still do to this day, but constantly I wanted people to know I was successful because I needed to feed, feed that ego. And there's nothing wrong with saying that, but I just needed people to see me to think I was successful. And I wasn't right. Cause I was just spending every single dollar. So now finally come to a point in my life where I slowed down a little bit where like, if I want to buy something, I don't just react. I think about if I want to buy something, think about if I want to do something and really take the time that even if I have a big month or a big year, you know, and I will, you know, really credit this to my wife. If, if it was up to me, I'd like, let's buy a plane. We're getting a plane tomorrow, which is like, uh, no, wait till we get to this number. So she, so by setting goals and waiting and then kind of waiting to see if, Hey, at that certain time, do you still want that thing that you wanted six months or a year ago? And I'm talking about bigger, you know, bigger picture things. It's made me really, you know, save more and really have the money where, you know, I'd rather, never miss out on a business opportunity, I can miss a trip or two or miss a car if I have to wait a year. But having, you know, setting ourselves up where now anything, you know, to an extent, anything that comes our way, we can kind of do now. Well, I love that. And I think for me, figuring out like what it means to even have lifestyle freedom on top of the financial freedom, like it means that I can set my day, I can choose what projects I take. I think that stuff's really interesting. But to get there, you have to figure out how do you turn this idea you have into something that makes money? And what I like about what I saw from your business is you didn't just say, you know what, we're going to make money one way, right? For any solopreneurs out there, especially coaches, consultants, it's important to have lots of streams of income. Usually we're talking about for coaches, uh, it's like coaching courses. You might build an online course. You'll get, you know, maybe you try the speaking route, which, you know, now you're not home 50 weeks of the year, <laughs> maybe hosting some events and even like affiliate income, my buddy, Pat Flynn and being a big on the passive income for it. Oh, Pat, yep. You found another stream that I, I don't hear anyone else talking about or even considering. And it's in this area of payment processing. I think a lot of us are like, let's give that to like the accountants, right? What is payment processing and how is it come into your world? Uh, and how does that work? Yeah, I mean, you know, credit card processing, right? You know, that where anytime you guys shop online or offline, you use a card, everyone think no, well, everyone's been around our business their whole life, right? You shop online, you shop off offline with a credit card, no one just knew they could make a percentage off of the sale, right? So imagine there's a store that just opened up and I don't know, some like sneaker release or whatever, uh, for the context of the conversation, there's a sneaker release, and there's 100 people lined up, outside of that store to, you know, buy whatever it is that they're selling. And if I, if I, or you was to set up the merchant account, what I mean is the ability for that business owner to accept payments. And by the way, it's for existing or new businesses. You can switch people who already have it for lesser rates, faster funding. We show you all the different ways to easily win over existing or new businesses. But think about it. Every person in that line you're making a percentage off of every single sale. Sometimes it can be, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 1%. It, it all depends on how you set that client up. And we teach you guys on that. But literally, you are like the silent owner that took zero risk, zero time. All you had to do was win that account, win that business owner's trust. And every person who's going to make a sale, not only does the business owner make money, you would make money at the same time. That's what's incredible about it. So why has no one been thinking about this except you guys like why why is this not obvious to people why did no one create uber before uber you know what i mean <laughs> you know like, so not we're not i'm not gonna, um you know making myself like uber let me just be very clear about that but a lot of people have you know some of the payments companies out there have tried before um but in the wrong direction of like you know and by the way, we stumbled across, like, I never thought I used to, I have a great life now. I love my life. But when it was funny in the beginning, when you talk about like, you know, having freedom, I had so much freedom before I created the residual payments, the trading platform. I was very free. I was golfing almost every single day doing whatever I want. Cause I would work from my phone because I like to go a million miles per hour, you know, building the world's largest trading platform. And literally, you know, we're doing numbers that people would take a decade to do you know, in a matter of a year, 
I have no freedom. <laughs> I live right here all day long, but I, but I'm sacrificing my life right now to help other people, which I think is absolutely amazing. So, you know, everyone's known about it and, you know, everyone, no one just ever thought of, like even smart people like yourself and neither even my other friends who have massive marketing companies or people who own their own companies. And that's another thing we talk about. We show business owners how they can also take advantage of this, do it themselves. 25% of our members are business owners. They're like, I'm here to switch my own merchant account to cut out the middleman. You can do that. You can cut out the middleman or middlewoman, whoever set you up and take control of that. We also show you how to do that. Or we have friends like this where they're like, I own a marketing company. I refer everyone to Stripe and PayPal. I'm like, you're an idiot. And Stripe and PayPal are great. Obviously they knew what they were doing, but you don't get money off of that, right? So now we show you how you can add this as, a, as an added value stream or a side hustle or build a massive payments company like my wife and I. So it's it's weird every time I talk to everyone, I say, you've been around this your whole life. You just didn't know you could make money off of it. And fortunately, when we built this platform, we were financially stable to say, give me the best people in the world. I don't care what it takes. Let's scale the crap out of this. So that's how we were lucky to really, you know, people come out of nowhere and build something really big. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because it's like there's this unbundling of what used to be like corporate's advantage, right? Like you have the corporate advantage, they have the scale, the, you know, what's it called? The efficiency of scale or whatever it is. And at the end of the day, like we just assume that we can't compete with these things like, you know, PayPal, Stripe, Venmo, like these businesses. And then, you know, credit card companies, like that's not like, why would we even step into this? But I think more and more, like the individual entrepreneur stepping in and saying, is there something that I could be doing individually to uh, work with business owners one-on-one -on -one to do this better so that they aren't beholden to the larger, the larger companies out there? And I think you guys did that with it, but it's not something anyone else was thinking of really. Uh, and what the opportunity is, is to your point, like, why not, instead of paying you know, it's 3% for a credit card transaction and a portion of that is going to a PayPal. Why can't we as the business advisors, the agencies, the consultants, the coaches that are helping people with everything else, why can't we be the one helping the small business owner with this stuff and saving them a little bit on the side? You know, I, I just think it's a different approach that we aren't thinking about. Yeah. And we all, and, and by the way, the credit card processing piece, which people learn how to resell or, you know, do it for their own business. After we teach you that there's so many other services that we teach you to turn into kind of to your point, a brand payment and business expert. You know, if you're a one trick pony, just doing one thing, eventually, you know, you're not going to evolve. And that's unfortunately, that's where a lot of people who work for payments companies, they just sell terminals and they go from town to town. And that's not really long-term thinking. So we show people how to really build their brands online and offline, how to really build these relationship with, relationships with these business owners and how to sell other things outside of merchant services or credit card processing, whatever you want to call it, you know, such as like payroll, gift cards, brand, you know, branding services, marketing services, social media. I tell everyone else when I train them, you want to be like me, where I'm not a number to my clients. I'm not the 2.7% guy or the 3%. I'm Dave and I'm an invaluable asset. I tell all my clients after I either set up your merchant account where I save you money, get you faster funding, better customer support, whatever it is we do, that's the easiest part of this equation. Anything you ever need for your business. If I don't own the company, I got a guy or I got a girl. Anything you ever need. If you need marketing, you come to me first. If you need X, Y, and Z, you come to me first. Why do I do that? Because if I can quadruple your sales, I can quadruple what I make. If I can help you quadruple your sales, can I make more money? Nobody has ever said no to me for that. I have a vested interest for you to be successful and for your business to never go away. If I can show you how to automate your business better by having a call with you, setting you up with a better payroll system that saves you time, anything that I can do for you is going to build that relationship, offer more value. And there's nothing wrong with making more money when you offer more value. And that's the long-term thinking, right? To have our, our oldest account, which is my wife's, because I've only been in this for 10 years. My wife's been in it for 23 years, is 15 years old. You don't have an account for 15 years if you're not doing something right. It's almost like being an equity partner in the business without them having to give up ownership. Like you you are. Or having to go in debt or having to take the years to learn that business and then finally take a risk. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Well, I before I dive into the actual payment processing part of it, which I, I know people have questions on because it's complicated or it could be if you don't have a good coach or in a good roadmap. Uh, before we dive into that, you said something which, which kind of made me think your 
what I'm hearing your vision of like your relationship with your clients is like as this trusted business partner. And I don't think all of us think like that. I think some of us are like, my history is marketing. So I'm the marketing person. And you're going to go to someone else for this other advice and someone else for this other advice. How have you like brought this approach into being kind of the business partner instead of the business, like one vertical expertise, like how, what's your approach to bringing that in? Is it just, you know, a lot of people in a lot of spaces, like how have you brought that into your business? Yes to that, but it's very simple. And that's why I also tell everybody is what's so interesting about people joining residual payments is some people just want money or some people want this money to open a food truck or open a restaurant or they have other dreams are going to open other companies by being in payments. I'm open to every type of business owner, good or bad. I see what works and what doesn't work. And that's what's also interesting. I've had some people that came into our program. They're like, I'm just here because I want to make extra money to fund my restaurant. I want to open. I'm like, okay, I didn't invent credit card processing. You're not offending me. You know, it doesn't matter to me why you're here. I mean, I'm just here to help you. Um, a year later, you know, about a year later, because we're almost about a year old. It was funny. The one person, this example was like, yeah, I don't really want to be a restaurant owner anymore after seeing, you know, everything because you get to interact every day with different types of business owners. So throughout the years, obviously meeting people like yourself and other people, but whenever I have clients, I pick their brains for my own where like if I see their sales go from 50,000 to 200,000 or a million to 5 million a month, I'm like, who the hell are you using? <laughs> you know, like, or what are you doing? Tell me because I want to just as much as I want to give you stuff, I want to give my other clients stuff. And that's where you see people online, you know, you see people, you know, promising the world online, flexing online, whatever the hell it is. And for a lot of business owners out there, you know, let's say someone has 20 grand, which for some people, that's a lot of money, right? Like 20 grand in the bank is everything. Let's say that they do have that much money and they start their own company. 10 grand goes to starting a company, 10 grand's like, I. You know, should I go to this marketing company? Should I go to this branding company? Should I, you know, uh, pay for podcasts? Should I do a podcast? I don't know. That one wrong move in the beginning, hiring the, the wrong person or, go or partnering with the wrong person or X, Y, and Z could cost them their whole entire company, right? So if you don't know who to reach out to and you're susceptible to just people online that will tell you anything to get a dollar from you, you know, it sucks because you may have taken three years to save that 20 grand. You've been dreaming about finally opening up your restaurant and your dream literally because you just didn't want to go to the right person or ask the right questions or take the time, you know, could be gone in a month. So that's where I always tell everybody like, you know, good. I tell good or bad, like, you know, either do this or don't do this. I've seen it work. I haven't seen it work, but we're constantly always chasing things as business owners. We see other people doing things. And we're like, oh, I want to do that. Or I want to do this. And a lot of people, when they're starting their companies, they're like, no, I want to pay for, get me the best marketing company in the world. I'm like, you know, you're brand new. Like, I know, I know I should connect you because I can make a kickback or referring you to that marketing company and then I make more money. But you got to build up your social media first. You got to build up your brand online first. You got to perfect the process. And then in a couple of months, we'll do that. I know somebody else wouldn't tell you that because they just want your money and they don't really care. You're a number. But for me, if we're going to work together, I want to work together with you for the rest of your life. So you can take my advice and run with it, or you can do whatever you want. But I'm just telling you as a, you know, I'm making money off of your account and I don't want you doing the wrong steps. So then I stop making money. Right. I, and sometimes I'll be very open with my clients. I'll tell them how much I'm making, but I'm like, but let me tell you why you're paying me this and why I'm worth it. Right. So I think just being very open and finding out when you're talking to your clients, what are your needs and why are they your needs and making sure it's not just marketing, right? Like if you want marketing, what is your goal? Well, I want leads for what? Or I want this. Okay, now I'm going to connect you. Like my one of my best friends owns the number one um, marketing for lead gen for estheticians. So it, we, we usually niche, 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 niche down to find out what they want. And then I have a Rolodex of here you go. And then everyone else who joins residual pay access to our Rolodex. Yeah, well. I mean, when I meet people and um, like they're in business, they're figuring out, especially when they're getting started, a lot of the questions is like, well, what do I do next? And I'm like, please work on a project by project basis. But if they go to an expert in one thing, guess what they're going to recommend? The one thing that, that, that they're an expert in, right? Like you go to a, a search engine optimization person and say, what should I do in my business to make it grow? They're going to tell you search engine optimization, but you go to a Facebook ads guy, they're going to tell you, you what you need is Facebook ads. 
yep. figuring out which project is the most important priority next, because all of them can help, but figuring out what's next for you and your particular journey, uh, getting that advice is difficult. And, it, you know, researching it and becoming like versed enough to know what is your, your own next priority is also difficult. So finding a partner that has, a, you know, a more generalist approach that has different like views on how to move your business forward. I think it can be super valuable, especially someone who's now stepped in and said, do you make money? I make money. Um, so I love your connection to the financial side of this too. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with being open. Everyone's, you know, we live in a day and age where it's like, you know, more people do transactions online than they do, than they do offline. Right. And, you know, how do you, how do you really build that trust? And I just tell everybody, I'm just like straight up with everybody. Hey, here's, what's going to happen. Here's how it's going to work. Here's what I'm going to make roughly I mean, i'm not always very open about how much i make you know but let's be honest but you know here's what you're going to receive right and i hate you know that everyone's just i feel like maybe it's because of the day and age like if you think about even like tiktok right tiktok's famous because people don't have a lifespan past 15 seconds right you know what i mean so it's the same exact thing where i see you know i'll never I'll never be too big. I'll never be too small. I don't care where I am. I'll accept. I'll talk to accept any firm request. Well, not any firm request, but I'll talk to anybody. Like there'll never be a point in time where, like, you know, I can't talk to you or, or I care about my perception, what people th think. But it's funny where I'll see like these young guys or young girls will request me on Facebook or something like that. I'm like, okay, I'll accept it instantly. Like, hey, you look like an entrepreneur like me, and then pitching me, and then like, tell me about what you do. I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, you know, how do you not like, I know it might be a bot message, but if it is stop sending your bot messages. And number two, like if there's something we could do together, it's funny. Like I always get all the time, like I'll show you how to make six figures. I'm like, that would, maybe 15 years ago, I would have been interested. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I, and you know what, I don't say anything bad back. Sometimes I'll be like, Hey, thank you. But I, unfortunately everybody just wants the quick sale and doesn't have long-term thinking of, I could have this person for the next 10 years, or I could, some people may say, well, Dave, I don't have a product that makes residual income like you. Well, you could join residual payments, but if you're not going to, just because that's a one-time sale that maybe doesn't make you any more money, how do you not know that person's not going to refer tons of people to you in the beginning? But if you don't do them right, they're not going to. Stop being a short-term thinker. Like, Enjoy the process of building a company. Enjoy the process of meeting your prospective clients and enjoy helping people out. And if you lead more with value than just gimme, 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 people are going to want to work with you longer and you're going to build your business longer. It's going to take you slower to do it, but I guarantee you the long-term play of building value first and just asking for something in return is going to pay off dividends in the long run. Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to dive a little bit into the, like a business model, like in terms of how you think about your business and maybe it's like it used to be one way and now it's it's evolved into something else. But for me, I'm thinking of like some coaches out there, their business is like 50% is speaking money and the other 50% they make up with like coaching revenues. Another might have like 30 this, 30 that, plus another 30 towards like affiliate or events. How have you designed your business? Where do you th think the opportunity is for most people? Like is payments the majority of it, or is it just like the first 20%, you know, roughly speaking as like a guidance in terms of the platform, you know, let me be very clear for anybody and they, people can message me questions as well for free advice. You know, when we built this training platform, we had, you know, let's say my wife and I combined 30 year, 33 years in payments, but primarily my wife with the, with the 23 years, myself, 10 years, we processed for a ton of coaches or gurus or whatever you want to call us. Right. Where, we understood the business. We understood everything they did, but we never built a training platform. I never thought to build a training platform it was because people kept, we kept training people offline and they kept asking us, Hey, Dave, Dave, teach me what you do. That's the only reason why we built it. And we wrote the whole entire code for the platform. And quite honestly, we're just like, I don't know, just let's go. And luckily because being in payments for so long, we had a Rolodex of already who to work with and who not to work with to really get this off the ground. And I was talking to my team earlier today, you know, honestly, I, I, I hate coaching in terms of like, I hate that it's like everything we've built is now sort of discredited because now we're a coach or a guru, right? Like it's kind of tarnishing all the beautiful companies that we own that are legit companies that have nothing to do with any coaching. I, I honestly don't like it, but I was even running the numbers on a piece of paper over here earlier today that 
I even talked to my team. They're like, no, Dave, I don't like the idea, but I still may. People can let me know, comment, let me know. I was like, I wish I could just give course one and two for free to everybody instead of it's like three, 350 bucks, which is inexpensive. And be like, hey, here's the education if you want to, which people have taken our course and gotten ba- jobs and payments. People have taken our course and then well, went to build payments companies, other places. You don't have to work with us. Let me be very clear. Our training is completely separate from actually doing the deals, you know, or you could keep this in your back pocket. So I was wondering, I'm like, all right, if I give it for free, you know, we're acquiring about 100 people a day. They cost us an average of 200. You know what I mean? So, you know, right then and there, you know, our fixed cost a month are probably a half a million dollars somewhere around there, right? So if there isn't any upsell, which surprise, we will upsell you guys. But I'm teaching you how to sell people. I always tell people, they're like, they get mad when I when they get upsold. I'm like, I'm teaching you how to upsell. And I also tell people, join when you first see our ad. We have to keep retargeting you. You cost me more money. <laughs> you were saying like, some of you cost me triple than, I, than you paid me. Right. And that's just the that's just the fact of the matter. Some people come in at thirty seven dollars and you cost me two fifty. I'm in the hole. I'm betting on you're going to like me. You're going to like my program. You're going to want to join. But we have a very vested interest when people join our one on ones and really work with us. It's like a year long stuff. of We really give we give more value. I just yesterday posted in the group and say, hey, who wants to have a free one on one call with me for a half hour randomly? Because thoughts come ahead. I did it. Two hundred fifty people grabbed it. I did. In two and a half weeks, 250 one-on-one calls, back to back to back to back for two weeks straight. We're constantly just giving people value. So we've been thinking about, you know, when we built the platform, how can we help more people by like, you know what? You can't say I'm a bad guy if I'm saying, hey, here's the free knowledge, do what you want. Now, if you want to come work with us and have us do all this work for you, which we do so much with joining you on every call, doing your apps, all these literally holding your hand for a year straight because the money's to be made on the merchant service side, you know, then you're going to pay for our time and my whole, my whole team, my whole team's time. Um, that can sometimes be, you know, five, $10,000. Oh my God. I said the number, right? Like that's the number that's going to happen. But I just hate that we are truly helping people and everything else, but I hate, you know, just kind of being, but no, no offense to anybody else out there as training platforms, but you know, we're CEOs of, bigger companies than our training program. You know what I mean? So this is just something that we also do. I make zero amount of money on, literally on the training. I pretty much break even on that monthly, but we're making money on the merchant service side. Now on the merchant service side, the credit card processing side, what it is is a Costco model. If you choose to work with us, some of our partner banks, et cetera, and if you choose, you don't have to, you can board accounts wherever you want. It allows us to work in power and numbers so we get exclusivity at certain banks, payments companies, terminal providers, et cetera. So we get exclusivity and better rates combined. So instead of, to your point in the beginning, instead of trying to be like, I'm going to build another, which we have a competitor to Stripe that's coming out, a new payments company we we're building called Sense. Instead of trying to compete with Sense or PayPal, which kind of late for that, I'm like, why don't I just build the biggest platform of the most agents in the world? That's how I could win. And that's why um, we built residual payments. Yeah. And I want to maybe dive into that a little bit more. Like, can anyone do this? Can anyone become a payment processor? Like, how hard is it? Because I think it's probably intimidating to some people listening to think I'm going to get into this field where I don't understand uh, how to create relationships with uh, credit card merchants or like to even address like whatever the like legal part of this is. Like, that seems intimidating to me. So how hard is this? Can anyone do it? Yeah. So, you know, it's funny is we never stop evolving our platform. And what I mean by that is like, we're even reshooting all of course one and course two, all the um, higher tier videos for the one-on-one people. Like we have over 300 hours of content, probably something like that. Like it's ridiculous how much we give everybody. And I used to think giving people more would help them. But honestly, after training so many different people, the thousands and thousands of people, it is holding people accountable and making sure they're retaining the right information at the right time. That's what's been the most strategic thing for people getting into this, because when they're first getting into it, everyone's completely different. Some people may have as a side hustle. Some people may be a value add to their business. Some people may want to build a payments company. Some people may want to go get a job in payments. Some people have wanted to do that, which is totally fine. Um, other people may work online or offline. Some people may build a team. Some people may want to you know, do it in person. So when we're speaking with everybody, our biggest goal in the beginning is, you know, getting rid of a cell phone bill. I'm not trying to make millionaires tomorrow. I always tell everyone the world doesn't need another Dave. They can use another Pat, but they don't need another Dave. 
it's not about trying to become a millionaire tomorrow. It's trying to eventually get to a certain amount of income where you can make a certain amount of residual income. And you can be able to leave your full-time job X, Y, and Z and do whatever you want. So in the beginning, it's not about trying to land the biggest account. It's trying to land about landing the easiest account. And we, and by doing that, we go after business owner run businesses. We give you two or three different types of terminals to learn about. We give you two or three different types of pricing programs to learn about. And we give you the type of businesses to go after outside of your own. If you have a circle of people, we also show you how to leverage that. We give you the equations on the, how to split up your day, what to go after. We keep you accountable every single week. We have, I go live every single Thursday with, with my wife and our, our call. My team goes live every single Tuesday. Each call is about an hour to two hours. My team also goes live five days a week in the group where people can ask questions. You have direct email access. You have direct, we, we answer probably 70 quest plus questions a day in the inner circle. So you're getting education all day long. We are handholding you a million different directions, but we're constantly bringing you back in and saying, making sure, keeping you accountable. Like I just got the list of all the accounts that got closed, which is completely separate from residual payments on the payment side. And it's amazing how that's what we focus on. Just like running ads, we don't just run ads and go, I don't know, run ads, what's working. We're constantly tweaking even ourselves, our content, how it's, how it's been being delivered. Like we realized 10 minute videos are kind of too long. We need quick two minute videos where, you know, cash discount. We're going to talk about it. Let's jump into it. Got a pen and paper and let, let's go right you know, on the vibe board, like just straight quick pieces of content like TikTok, where as opposed to having a 20 or 30 minute video, they're not retaining it, right? They're not retaining the right information. So, um, you know, with our training program, that's something you're always going to be building and building and building and building. But I also think asking people on your side of your program, which no one ever wants to do, but actually giving your people more in the beginning than they are giving you and, you know, just constantly tweaking everything and, and looking at everything you're doing and seeing your statistics in terms of your numbers, what am I, what's really coming from this? Because I know some people don't care, but we, outside of being a good person, we need people to be successful. So we're so highly driven in looking at numbers in terms of people who are building their payments companies that we can see. Cause some people go on, we don't work with us and they're just getting training and we don't get to see their numbers. But from what we can see, it's constantly working on ourselves, working on our program and we're helping them work on themselves. And then literally because we're on calls with everyone, four or five days a week. And then, you know, calls are also recorded. If you miss them, we're constantly hearing feedback from all of our members and then constantly just tweaking our program. Well, I mean, I love that it's not just a create it and forget it digital course. Like you guys sound very active in your community. You're handholding the students along the way. You're getting their feedback, answering their questions. I think that's huge and shows that you're involved and invested in this, in the community working. I'm curious, are there any s- stories from that community of success, of things that, you know, you didn't expect just, you know, like anything that would make this feel more real and human to people out there listening? So, yeah, that's a great question. So I'll be honest, I've been shocked. First of all, I was shocked. Like, where are people getting this money from? <laughs> right. When, when we were first, like, you know, as I hate, and again, we're, we're always trying to tweak it, but we give Trust me, you, you've never seen how much value we like. Literally, everyone tells me how many programs they've been a part of. And then they're joining and they're like, holy crap, you guys, you know, I'm like, because, yeah, we care. Right. Because, again, because the end goal is everyone to be successful. And, you know, we've had every walk of life, every type of person inside of the program. And some of the people that have one day a week open because, you know, they have a full time job and they also have kids. It's about you know, it's about making sure that, Hey, if you got less hours in the day, or, Hey, you have X, Y, and Z, there's certain things that we're going to challenge you to to do that regardless of any company you ever own, these are things you're going to have to do. If you want to ever be a leader, these are things you're going to have to do. And it's been crazy, amazing outside of people building their companies, which I always tell a lot of people, if it's their first company, like be proud of yourself for starting this company, be proud of yourself for taking the leap of faith, be proud of yourself for becoming accountable and I'm wanting to change. And I, I go a little Dr. Phil on some people and I'm not licensed in any way. And I'm just as messed up as everybody else. But when people are like, you know, I'm scared to talk to business owners or I'm scared to be on camera. I'm like, well, let's tackle that first. Let's, let's handle that. I'm like, I don't care about landing accounts. I'm like, I care about you challenging yourself every single day and growing as a person, because if you ever do, or when you build a big company, whether it's your payments company or something else, and you do have employees or you don't, you're going to be a leader. You have to say, you've done these things. You have to say, 
hey, you know, there's nothing I haven't done that I don't expect from you, right? And that's where just seeing the transformation from somebody joining the program who doesn't matter what background they are, but like scared to be on camera and not even coming on Zoom calls to them being interviewed by TV stations talking about their payments companies, like and just seeing that transition. So the one biggest thing that I do for everybody inside of the program is outside of the calls and talking with everybody is if someone's scared to do something, one, we make our people, you know, write every week what they're working on and keeping themselves accountable. And then they also post their progress. They post their videos, they post their deals, they post all, you know, not their deals, but, you know, talking about the accounts they won. Cause I said, if you can't find, if you can't find the drive in yourself, maybe just posting and saying, like, for example, I, I'm very, I tell people the craziest stuff. Like, I'll just be like, so they can feel comfortable. I'll say, I'm insecure. And I, I'll be on a call with a hundred some people on that. I'll say, I literally leave this call and I'm so insecure after talking to you guys. I'm up for hours wondering what you're thinking about me, thinking you're going to leave me tomorrow. But my insecurities drive my sales. My insecurities drive you know, my urge to always make this better because I'm so insecure. That's why I never stop evolving the platform because I'm always scared about what you guys think about me. I also tell them, I say, I love diamonds. I buy diamond necklaces. Why do I buy diamond necklaces? Because I love them, but I also love when people see me wear them. It makes me feel good about myself. So if I could be so open about that and telling you guys stuff like that, or, hey, I'm scared, you guys intimidate me, you guys, whatever it may be, it makes them feel more open where I tell them, hey, post in the group and tell people, hey, man, I was really scared to talk to you know 10 people in person. I was really scared to go on camera. I was really scared to send this message. Or I was really scared to speak in front of this group. And for anyone else who's out there who's been scared, here's what I was scared of. Here's how I persevered. And here's what came from it. So we're turning our people into, because they are CEOs, to inspire other people in the group so that they can see to your point, well, that guy looks like me and he did it, or that girl looks like me. We also weekly talk about people's wins and so other people can see it and see the hundreds of people making residual income. So kind of trying to push people past outside of just like make money. Like I want you to make money and build a company, but I also want you to say like, you know, I can do anything now. I've really grown as a person by joining the platform. Yeah. I mean, you might have too many to think of by name, but are there any like star students that have stood out in terms of their background and in making like, like this really worked for them? Like they really took this and ran with it. So, I mean, there's, there's tons of people. I mean, I just did, um, like I said, I did uh, 200, it's like 225, something like that, over 200, um, the free, just one-on-ones. And I got, I didn't do it with everybody. I got probably 100 to 150 video testimonials and not anybody in that video testimonial. And then 99% of them are all making money, said anything about money. It was more about how they've just changed as a person, how they love the community, how they love their, their company, how they love their clients, how they love learning about business. You know, the number, I mean, we had people this month closing 10 accounts, seven accounts, six accounts, eight accounts, tons of people closing two or three accounts. It's all, it's when they first land the first couple of accounts, you never know when you land an account, it's bigger than you thought. You never know when you land an account, we show you how to turn them into a referral partner. You never know when you land an account and they have multiple locations. So th there's not like two people doing this. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people making residual income. So I'm not going to put anyone's name out there. No, on no. Glass, but yeah, yeah, no, I was but, thinking like a type of person, like, is it like agency owners are really crushing it with this or lawyers or, you know, I'm like, I'm curious, like the, 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 the style of the people that are like really doing well. The people who are willing to tell me the truth about what they're actually doing and actually get off their ass. I, I always tell you, do you own a pair of shoes? Lace them up, get off your ass, right? Like there's no, everyone thinks like, I, I, and I, I tell people this too, and I'll say it to the face. I'll say, have you ever, you know, have you ever owned a company before? No. Have you uh, just learned about payments? See, I'm just learning about it. How are you on social media? I don't have one. Have you ever done marketing online? No. Okay, how are you going to get clients? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do marketing online. So you're going to start a company, learn about this industry, learn about social media, learn about marketing and find success. Good luck, right? Like, so the reason what I just like we just our members are our clients and our clients also resell a lot of our services. So when you join our program, we have a vested interest for you to 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 really be happy and to keep just like we do for our merchant clients, our clients in RP sell a lot of other services and make all the rest of our friends happy with their services. So that's where we have a vested interest to help them. So I tell people, you know, if everyone wanted to sit online all day and make tons of money, I wouldn't have to have this program. 
right? And you have to do things that maybe make you uncomfortable for the first year. So you never have to do them again. So you can become comfortable, but you're not willing. You keep going from one program to the next. And maybe those programs were bad, but eventually you may have to look at yourself and going, what's the common denominator of, am I actually working hard? And we tell people, Hey, it, that's where we have people keep accountable. Every two weeks, I want you raising your hand. I want you posting, telling us what you're doing. So two months from now, you finally speak up and I find out what you're doing. I'm like, that's the exact opposite of what I told you. Like, what are you doing? Don't do that. And so we're like constantly on, on top of every single person, but there's, it's the people that aren't too good, you know, aren't, aren't too proud to, to get out there and maybe hit business as a person or join networking groups or actually do things online. I want people working online, offline, but I want you trying to find a mixture of all different things you're doing. And then strategically looking at your numbers, looking at the time it took, looking at your pitches, looking at the relationships, and then really evaluating your business and seeing what works and what doesn't work. And I tell everybody, I say, you know, outside looking for referral partnerships, you know, there isn't one podcast. Uh, it's not, I mean, imagine me in like, I don't know, I'm going to do like a podcast a month and I'm going to wait for the merchant accounts to come in or the memberships. Like who, whoever does that? No, I'll be on podcasts. I'll do my own podcast. I'll do my live events. I'll go on my social media, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, uh, this, I'll go, I'll be at my B and I meetings. I'll be on, I'll be on clubhouse later. Um, then I'll also do a half a million dollars in, in ad spend for the month. Then I'll have some affiliates come in because you know, like, for example, um, our one Facebook got hacked and we were down for like three months on Facebook, but I had so many other nets everywhere else. My business didn't slow down. So when you're a business owner in any aspect and, you know, as, as you know, as with your businesses and your podcast, like there's never one interview and probably not this one. Guarantee this is probably what your, your numbers are definitely going to go down. But, <laughs> but there's never one interview that's going to like take you to the promised land. It's repetition, repetition, repetition. I always tell everybody. You know, if you get lucky, amazing. But 99.9% of us don't get lucky. We just strategically work our asses off and then lucky things happen, right? So when you look at people who are, have big podcasts or are big on social media or have big companies, outside of the people who go viral or get lucky, it's the people that kept putting out content, kept doing their podcasts. When everyone else stopped because they didn't see their numbers, they kept persevering. So the people that commit to, 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 to really telling us what's going on, follow every single step that we tell them to do. I don't just teach things that we do. I look at the numbers every single month. I ask the people who are crushing accounts, just like I ask my clients, what are you doing? They always say, I'm following what I'm doing this, Dave, and this is what I'm doing. And then I tell everyone, I literally take those notes and build on it to help all new people. And the one common denominator is not age, is not looks, is not connections. 99% of the people who are killing it right now are not from rich families, do not have real business backgrounds. They all have full-time jobs. They are just doing, willing to do whatever it takes to be successful because finally enough is enough and they are not going to let something else pass them by. They're not going to wait for their, to, for their house to foreclose. They have something that they found a higher power to whatever it is to finally make this happen. And I always tell everybody, you know, 90% of you were all you know, all messed up in here, even if you get to 10 grand a month or 20 grand a month or 20 grand plus or whatever it is that you want to make a month, you're still the same messed up person. We have to figure out this first before we really start to build the business. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's amazing. The, the amount that I think you guys are teaching in this, in my mind, it would have been like, here's all the technical stuff about and go and look at yeah. payment, <laughs> okay, processing, yeah. pre payment processing, right? I'm like, it's just, I'm sure I, in my mind, it was all of that, but I'm looking at your, your course syllabuses and you have, I mean, you have different courses, intro, intermediate and advanced, but there's things like, you know, things that like we teach, like how to niche down and, you know, in your market and uh, sales 101 training is in here, uh, leveraging mentors, uh, sales techniques, phone call, like how to run a phone call. There's a, there's a lot of things that they're learning along the way that I'm sure will help them along with the process. It's not just how to learn this industry. Uh, I'm curious oh, no. if I asked you, what do you think are some of the most important skills that you are teaching in this course and program? I should say it's not just a course. So, you know, I'm always constantly learning myself, like, cause these, everyone educates me every single day, right? Like I, I love having just conversations daily with everybody because it just builds up my bank of knowledge, right? You never like, that's why I tell everybody, you inspire, like we have, we do like, it's crazy when I hear like, we have chiropractors, dentists, lawyers, doctors, um, truck drivers, hotel owners, uh, restaurant owners, and then just 
people, any, any, anything inside of our program. So we have a lot of smart people inside of our program. Even myself, you know, we are always, we're always chasing, you know, the next thing for the most of us, most of us as entrepreneurs, we're chasing the next podcast that's going to make it. We're chasing the next stage we're going to speak on. We're chasing the next business venture that's going to go. We're chasing the next uh, social media post that's going to go viral. And I always found myself chasing that, right? And we're always trying to be something like somebody else. We're trying to, we're always following the next trends, right? You always see on TikTok, how do you go viral? And then literally you're doing something for a week. You drop everything and redo that. Or like, hey, this is the sound. Put the sound on. And you guarantee, like, you know what I mean? Like we're always doing, even as podcast shows, I'm sure you find yourself victim sometimes of like, you know, even you, like we need the lights. We need the, like, it, you we're constantly tweaking things when it's fine to tweak things. But I told people, I said, Enjoy the process of meeting business owners. Enjoy the process of building your company. Enjoy the process of, you know, going around and learning how this works and really building your education because, and le- enjoy the process of creating content for social media, which you have, we teach everyone about big about, about social media, because if you're enjoying what you're doing, doing this and saying like, I'm so excited, like restaurant owners know how to run restaurants. Right. And that's all they essentially know that if they're a successful restaurant owner and that's all they ever did, they had to run a successful restaurant. You're getting to look at something and learn something that most people won't know. This is an invaluable asset. You're going to have the rest of your life. We're going to interview all these different types of business owners intimately, learn about their businesses, good and bad. And that's a skill you're going to have for the rest of your life that could be going to anything. So enjoy it. If you enjoy meeting these business owners, if you enjoy, you know, making the money, if you enjoy building your business, if you enjoy posting to social media and then you get clients from it, you won twice. But if you enjoy the process of doing it, then you're not really thinking about hard selling them. You're more thinking about how can I help you? How can I offer you value? And the money's going to come, right? Because we're always just trying to go with, with the hard sell. And it's even to social media, for example, like I used to find myself always trying to do things that I just wasn't really me or I didn't like. And now, you know, probably lost a lot of followers going, but my videos, like, I'll just shoot a video. I won't rewatch it. I post it. So I'm like, I like that one posting it. I don't, I don't have time. I don't care anymore. Like I enjoy the process of creating companies. I enjoy the process of thinking of something crazy and actually seeing it happen or not happen. But like, just, just living life where you're like, Hey, you know, I, I, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy building these companies. I'm enjoy making content on social media. I'm enjoy talking to these business owners. And you know, I know money's going to come from it. And if you, do, if you live, if you don't have to live beyond your means, then you're not going to be so aggressive with people and be like, I don't care. Switch. Give me your merchant account. I need this. I need this. I bought a car. Right. So that's one thing we teach about how to build your partnerships, which is the, the biggest key factor for our success in our payments companies. We teach about a million different social media tricks. We also have like every other week, special guests coming on our platform, big CEOs from different companies. Um, come and speak for people, right? To, to try to help them with their mindset. Because again, I always tell everyone joining, if you're coming for mindset and all that stuff, that's amazing. And we'll help you with that. This is about building payments companies and closing deals and making money. If you're, if we're all crushing deals and you're the one not doing anything, you're not benefiting this whole model because we close so many deals and have the biggest, I think we do. We have the biggest pool of people and payments. We all working together we get to you know get all these great relationships and these great partnerships and the most beautiful thing about the whole entire platform it's never been done before outside the platform what's never been done is from our payments companies if you had people bringing deals to these payments companies which is the normal thing of, of people bringing deals i could never get two people in the room let alone 200 or 2000 and say hey dan and shelly Dan, could you tell Shelly what's working for you? Shelly, could you give Dan? They'd be like, uh, no, Dan can screw off. I'm not teaching Dan anything. So myself included, because we're still actively building our payments companies. We're the, um, was it Larry Bird? We don't only play the game, we coach the game, but we're still, imagine imagine like Larry Bird coaching. Like, I, I, gotta, I gotta go play too. Like getting off the, the you know, off the, off in the bleachers and actually going in the game while he's coaching people around the court. The greatest thing, you know, is, myself included, we're all competing against each other, but there's too much business out there. So I, I think it's so commendable, even to our members, if anyone watches this, is everyone knowing their competition, but everyone genuinely helping each other and encouraging each other, which is amazing. Oh, love it. And if people are interested in being a part of a community like that and stacking some of the skills that he was just talking about, uh, residualpayments.com is one of the websites. 
on IG if you just want to follow his life, meet the Carlins. And where else can they find you? And lastly, as we wrap up the show, what are you excited about? Uh, meet the Carlins on TikTok. Um, I think it's been on YouTube. I don't know some of those places, but um, just going to meet. We, we actually run our meet the Carlins on that one. So we will get back to you in a timely manner if you message us. Uh, we're launching a new payments company uh, called Sense, which is going to compete with Stripe. Beware. It's if everything for business owners makes sense. That's our tagline. Everything we do for business owners makes sense. Uh, we have a new CRM launching, Sense CRM. CRM. We, la- we, la- we uh, wrote the whole entire code for so you guys can be on the lookout for that. We have our live first live event uh, in a week, which I'm really excited about. Losing a ton of money on it, but I'm so excited. We have Ray Kwan from Wu Tang, Rick Ross, Bethany Hamilton, Iron Cowboy. A couple. We have our, our first two months. We have our first virtual event with us, Bob Menery, uh, Ray Kwan, Rick Ross again. I think Kevin Larry, if he's got uh, Grant Cardone, Josh Altman from Million Dollar Listing, and a bunch of other CEOs as well. So that I'm. That's what I'm really excited about. The other day, I got the I got the FaceTime with Raekwon. So that was like, this is the coolest thing ever, right? I was like, who cares about the money? I, I'm like, give me my best friend. I'm excited. I'm excited to figure out how I can make things cheaper for people and how I can give more to everybody. And even all of our existing members, I keep giving them more stuff for free. Like I just keep, which I can't divulge because it's our some of our proprietary stuff. But when you join, you'll see we never stop. We never stop evolving. We never stop building our platform. We never stop giving value and all of our members get all future upgrades. I'm excited how we've now even perfected. It's one thing to, to, to know something and to be, do something really well, but it's another thing to be very successful at also teaching people how to be successful. It's two different types of things. I always knew I would help people. I just never knew how. So I'm excited to get to really meet people at these live events. I'm excited to see these people you know, a year or two for now, and then, you know, hug them and be like, wow, man, my, my life changed. I always tell everybody is it's the craziest thing that we live in a day and age where someone could see an ad, maybe hate me or maybe be like me, but, you know, see an ad and be like, all right, yeah, the guy sort of seems like, you know, I'll give him a shot. You know, he seems like I'll give him $37 and see what it's all about. And then oh, I go do a course too. And then maybe jump on to work with us for a year straight and then go on to, change their lives. You know, my wife and I, we don't have kids. We have three dogs. I like to think of all these families, you know, there's a lot of people that they're doing this with their kids and their family members and their spouses. And if there's tens of thousands of people a couple of years from now, and they're all crushing it and their whole lives have changed. And now it's been a kind of a, uh, you know, kind of a, a, a domino effect. That's where I think is going to be super cool um, in the long run. So that's what I'm really excited about in the future. Amazing. And like he said, he's never going to stop. And you also, if you are a personal brand out there, you're a business, you're looking for ways to bring more income into your life. You also should never stop investing in yourself, investing in learning. And I hope you guys picked up what he was putting down today on the show. Appreciate you guys listening. And David, I appreciate you showing up and sharing all that with it with us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in and we will catch you all next time. You've just taken your marketing knowledge to another level with this episode of Brands on Brands. But we have plenty more ways to help you build a brand that matters. Head over to BrandsOnBrands.com for resources, as well as access to our blogs, videos, and exclusive coaching sessions with your host. Be sure to visit BrandsOnBrands.com.